for just a minute, 2,000 years ago, the Son of God healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people. Can you just see him for a minute? Standing somewhere or sitting on a rock somewhere on a hill not far from the Sea of Galilee early some morning the air was blowing just right his hair moving so gently maybe that morning he wore a white robe and a blue mantle over it can you see his eyes still full of love but such authority and the people coming to him by thousands. And he laying hands on them. And healing them. The blind are seeing and the deaf are hearing. And the lame are running as he touched them. The lepers are cleansed. Thousands of them. That same crowd followed him up a mountain it says and seeing the multitude he went up into a mountain and when he was set his disciples came to him and he began to preach what we call the Beatitudes giving us the constitution of Christianity thousands and thousands of people sat there listening but what we don't know often and don't think about is every one of those people that sat down on that hill and heard him say, blessed are the poor in spirit, every one of them had just been healed. For the Bible says he healed them all. And it's confirmed to us in Luke 6, just keep listening. In Luke 6, 19, we read the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. And right there it says, and he lifted up his eyes and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. That crowd that heard him preach the Beatitudes were healed right before they heard him teach. And maybe two hours later, he was done and began to walk down that mountain. I can just see it. I see John with him and Peter. I see James and Bartholomew. I see Cleopas and I see the others coming down that hill in wonder and amazement. And there down that hill waits a leper who could not be with the crowd. Because had he joined that crowd, they would have stoned him. So he waits down the hill for the master to come. And he comes and throws himself down on the ground and says, Master, Master, if thou wilt, thou will make me whole. And the scripture says, Jesus looks and says, I will. And his leprosy is cleansed that instant. Now Jesus that morning had had a glorious miracle service and healed them all. Walks up the mountain and teaches the greatest sermon ever preached. Comes down the mountain and heals that leper. But the Bible says on the way to the house of Simon Peter, just as he's walking, there comes a centurion, a commander of a hundred men, a centurion, a Roman officer. Master, master, my servant is laying at home at the point of death. Just speak the word. But before he says speak the word, Jesus out of his precious lips says, I'll come and heal him. This is to me so remarkable because... The master just had a morning miracle service. Probably took him four or five hours to heal the sick. Now he preached for two hours. It's afternoon by now. And the centurion says, 
my servant is laying sick at home. And Jesus says, I'll come and heal him. Most preachers would say, I'm tired, come back tomorrow. But not the master. I'll come and heal him. The man says, no, just speak the word. My servant will be healed. For I understand your authority. I'm a man also with authority. And Jesus speaks the word and says, I have not seen faith in all Israel like this. He goes to the house of Simon Peter and heals his mother-in-law as they come beseeching him for her healing. And that same evening, the Bible says, when even was come, they brought to him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. There in the evening, he heals the sick one more time. And the scripture says, now when Jesus saw the great multitude, this is nighttime now. That crowd didn't want to go home. He gave commandment to depart to the other side. He comes out of that house, gets into a boat. By now it's 11.30 p.m., maybe later. He gets in the boat and falls asleep. He had a long day that day. And a storm arose. And they woke him up and said, Don't you care that we perish? And I can see it that night. The wind blowing and the waves coming into that boat as he stands there. Most likely getting wet by the waves. Speaks the word, Be still. And everything is perfect. And they looked at him in amazement and said, what kind of man is this? It wasn't long before the boat reaches Gadara on the other side. I've been to that spot. As he comes out there, two demoniacs come run down that cemetery down the hill. Crying out. There's such an atmosphere that morning, a miraculous atmosphere as he comes out of that boat. Demons are stirred. Are you here to torment us before our time? They were fierce, the Bible says, that no man that passed by that way could even hold them down or control them. Behold, they cried, what have we to do with thee? Or thou come hither to torment us before our time. And he commands the demons to leave. And a herd of swine, many swine feeding, are possessed with devils. The Bible says the entire herd runs violently down that place into the sea and perished in the waters. And the inhabitants come in beg him to leave their coasts. He enters into a ship again. And now he gets back to the house. He's sitting in that house with the Pharisees and Sadducees all around him as he's teaching. And suddenly the ceiling begins to fall as a man is lowered down the ceiling by his friends. Had a palsy. They could not get him through the door or window, so great was the crowd. They just dug a hole and let him down. And Jesus, seeing their faith, he said, Your sin is forgiven. And the Pharisees and Sadducees be begin to question, Who is this man that can forgive sin? And Jesus said that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He says to, to the man, Get up and walk. And the man gets up and carries his bed and walks out. And all of them marvel. And while the Lord is sitting there, something dramatic happens, something mighty happens. As a little man walks through the door, the whole crowd is amazed to see him there. The chief ruler of the synagogue is here. Jairus shows up and walks in and comes and kneels before the Lord and says, Master, Master, my daughter is laying at home about to die. Come lay your hand on her that she may live. Jairus understands 
to bow before a man, they would stone him. To bow before a man, he would lose his place as the chief ruler of the synagogue. But he was willing to pay the price. For he knew this is not just a man. This is the son of almighty God. Master, he says, my daughter is laying home about to die. Come lay your hands on her. And Jesus walks out of that house and the crowd follows him. And I can just see the master coming out of that house with Jairus so nervously holding on to him. And there's the man, the young man, healed of palsy, walking so beautifully and perfectly with his friends. And the crowd is wondering, and some are looking at, at the master, Jesus, and some are looking at the man who had just been healed. I can see some of those Pharisees looking at that man who had just been healed and says, Are you really healed? Did you really have that problem? As Jesus is walking out. And now they all walk out of that house. The atmosphere is charged with the healing power of God. And just as they leave that house, a lady runs down the road to a little house on the corner. And she knocks on the door. In that house is laying a little lady that the historians called Lydia. We know her as the woman with the issue of blood. Laying in that bed 12 years that sickness had had her. And a friend comes in and says, get up, get up, get up. Put your clothes on. The man they call the rabbi from Nazareth is about to pass by your door. Lydia that moment may never happen that way again get up out of your bed the son of god is about to pass by your door my brother my sister i have news for you he's about to pass by your door too she says get up quickly and lydia comes out of her bed and puts her clothes on her frail little hands trembling because she's so weak and frail. As she comes out of that house, she looks and sees the crowd, and there she sees the rabbi from Nazareth. And in her heart she says, If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. And makes a decision, gentlemen, that morning to crawl on her hands and her knees Till she reached that spot where she can touch him. And can you just see that dear little woman, once noble, here she is crawling on that dusty road in Galilee. Rugged, dusty road. Her hands begin to bleed as somebody's sandal steps on them. The dust flies and covers her hair and her eyes and her face. And as she gets close enough, with dusty, dirty, ble bleeding hands, she reaches over, shaking and trembling, and touches the hem of that precious garment and feels the power of God rush through her body. And she is whole. And Jesus looks and says, who touched me? And Peter said, Lord, the whole crowd is touching you. No, he says, I felt someone touch me for virtue had gone out of me. People, I beg of you right now, lift your hands and whisper his name. There's miracles happening in this room already. There's miracles happening in this place already. Oh, it is Jesus. Oh, it is the Savior. And she's made completely whole. And she stands up with such a joyful smile on her face as she hears him say, Thy faith has made thee whole, daughter. But that little girl is still there waiting. Little girl. Jairus' little daughter at home. And Jesus goes with Jairus now after healing that woman. And the woman follows him. And the man who was healed with the palsy is still there. As Jesus walks into that home and 
raises that little girl from the dead who by now had died. He walks out of that house after raising the dead and two blind men follow him and he healed them too. The Bible says they followed him into the house of Simon Peter. And as they come out of that house, they bring unto him one who was deaf and dumb. And he healed him too. In so much the crowd wondered and said, we've never seen it like this in all Israel. Yeah, they've never seen anything like this. Why? Because yesterday they saw the crowds healed, morning and evening. They saw the leper cleansed. They heard about the centurion's servant. They heard about the men in Gadara. They saw the men with the palsy healed. They saw the woman healed and the little girl who was dead raised. How else but could they say, we've never seen it in l like this in all Israel. Oh, people lift their hands and call his name. He's in this room. He's in this house. Everyone stand. Everyone stand. Everyone stand. Lift your voices and lift your hands and call his holy name. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. It is Jesus. Go. In my soul. For 